All right, buddy. So what's your name and where are you from for the people that don't already know? Dirty Weather 916. I'm from Sacramento, California, from Del Paso Heights, Bloods, to be more specific. Okay. Uh, Dirty Weather 916, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of people probably already heard of you from your YouTube channel. Uh, and we'll talk about that later on. But obviously, you're over here on 23 and 1, you've been to the pen, man. How long you been? What'd you go for, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, my first bid was for robbery, and I did like I did off of eighteen. I did seventeen, and awesome. then the second time I went was for for uh, possession of a weapon in a situation that I shouldn't have ever went because I was defending myself, but I ended up going back. So a total of twenty years though, it was like 23, 24 months. So basically, it was like seventeen and two. So it was nineteen, damn near twenty years. Man, you got spared for having a gun as a convicted felon. I think over here it's like uh, mandatory five. What? Yeah, 85%. Actually, they're about to change uh, Virginia's uh, down to 63%, I believe, in 2020. I think sometime to end of this year. I'm not sure. So what what California got is is basically they got that spe They got a hot special. I know in Cal Sacramento, it's that 16 doubled up to 32. 16, so 16 doubled up to 32. To 32 months. That's for what? pretty much what you're looking for for being a felon in possession. Now, if you using that in the commission of a crime, no, that's something different. Don't, don't they be hitting y'all with like gang enhancements and shit too? If they can prove it, yeah. Yeah, if you're but registered if like, or whatever. If, yeah, my situation was a little bit more domestic. Like he pulled a machete. He pulled a machete and I pulled that. So at the end of the day, even though I beat him up and we had we had fist of cuffs, I had to hit his uh, mom with a three piece and a biscuit. And I don't, I'm not to, not to brag, but she was sitting on top of the person that I was with about to ground pound. So I did what I had to do. So with all of that being done, they didn't get charged with nothing. Like the, the son and his mom didn't get charged with nothing. And I ended up going back and they ain't charged with no battery or nothing, but I went back for that pistol alone. Okay. And uh, see, this is what I don't understand about the gang enhancements, man. Maybe you could clarify it for me. Maybe you can't, I don't know. But, uh, how that okay let's say you're registered man they, they got you in the book as a you, yeah. you're a known gang member Valid, validated validated there you go that's the word i was looking for man so you're validated you're in the books and you commit a crime that has nothing to do with any kind of gang shit at all is it yeah. chances are going to be if you had a gun you're gonna be hit with some kind of gang enhancement they gotta prove one has to prove the other like you can just get caught with a gun and now you get caught with a gun now, if you was in a gang neighborhood or something, or there was known tension, and they can prove that you had that because you was ready for the opposition or something like that, maybe they could try, but even that would be a reach. They okay. want you, they want to see you with pictures and guns, and I don't know why people do that on the internet, but take pictures with guns and stuff and think that they're not going to have to answer for that. Yeah, and, and speaking of that, I, I want to speak on what you just said too, but uh, so... It's not always gang enhancements, even if you are validated. Yeah, nah. Okay, okay. See, I always thought, like, eh, shit, you get hit, you're validated, you get hemmed up, you're getting gang enhancement for the shit, too. Unless it was now something like a domestic a, or something like that, you know? Uh, yeah, you get, to a, get into a brawl in the middle of the mall, oh, yeah, you're getting all type of gang enhancements. Okay, yeah. That shit's crazy. All right, man. So, uh, what you were saying uh, about not posting guns... And stuff like that on social media. Look, I just read an article this morning in Maryland. Uh, I believe it was three rappers got convicted for murders because of the rap lyrics. And they took it to Supreme Court or something. And they passed that now in Maryland you could be convicted based upon your lyrics. And that shit wow. Crazy. Yeah, so now, uh, you know, he was pretty much convicted because it kind of matched the crime scene, the caliber of the weapon and everything in yeah. his lyrics. But I mean, how many? There's a ton of guns out there with a 40 caliber. You know what I mean? And and I yeah. read the lyrics and shout out. I'm not going to detail on it, but man, they're hemming people up for the slightest shit. They they without hardly any evidence at all. Man, that's how they did. That's how they did X-rated. Yeah, man, that shit was crazy, huh? That's how they did X-rated. Took his lyrics, but his lyrics really wasn't. They really wasn't the crime lyrics. Yeah. But they still used it because it was familiar with what had happened actually. So they wild, can man. use it as evidence, and they can and will. Yeah. 
That's crazy, man. So, People need to change it up a bit, you know? It's like yeah. I, I did a video the other day. It's like uh, some of these guys just ain't learning from the past. From the past, you know. Uh, yeah. What yeah. do you think? What, why do you think that is? I think because there's a gap. There's a there's a real gap between the past and the present, and that gap, a lot of people were gone. Like a lot of people were in prison, or a lot of people gave up. So really, you you have a generation that's having to learn off of social media. Period. And if you see a negative stuff on social media, I mean, yeah, that that's what's raising our kids nowadays. But the actual people that was gonna take a stand and 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 say something and do something, man, they're getting less they're getting lesser and lesser because the more they see that the youth don't care or the young don't care, it, it's it's gonna only get worse. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you something, man. This some real shit. When I first hit the prison, I was wild. Like I like my first charge was attempted murder in prison. That was my first charge that I actually got caught for. Yeah, and I kept on going, but I was I was wild as in a gang banging mentality, wild. And then I learned about how to how to get my money inside, how to get my money selling whatever, doing whatever. I learned that, and then gang banging became less important as getting this money. So, but to answer what you were saying, like if people if people need to know what they're getting into before they actually partake, like what are you willing to give up to partake in this life? Like, are you willing to give up your freedom and do 20 years? Are you really willing to do that before you take these actions? And if you are, these are some of the things that you have to think about. Mind you, when I first hit the main line, well, not first hit the main line, but in Old Folsom, right? Old Folsom is a, is a prison that has like 5,000 inmates. At any given time, you could have like 1,500 inmates on the yard. 1,500. So there's no hiding nothing, no hiding. And man, gossip go like, pew, pew, pew. so the thing is the trade, the hustle trade. I'm not going to necessarily just flat out say drug trade, but I'm going to say the hustle trade. When you see in everybody having things and doing stuff and smoking weed and you get sometimes you get tired of buying like 50 ball after 50 ball. Like, is that what they're called? What, what they called in like Virginia and stuff? 50 balls. Uh, it depends. Just call it fifty bag, fifty sack, whatever the case. You know, they got different, different, different words. Actually, uh, I'm trying to think of the main word they used in there. Shit, <laughs> uh, they had a different word in one of those compounds that was not like your average word. So I don't know I'll, if I think was about it a hat remember. or a cap. Cap. There we go. It was a cap. Yeah, they put that shit in toothpaste cap. <laughs> Or about a cat or a spoonful to do the spoons with the, uh, you know. Uh, I think I th that was spoons. I think with the with the orange sporks, I think a scoop was like an eighth or some shit. I can't remember what Damn. it It was something like that, man. It was, it was spoonful. I think that would be kind of fat. That'd be a fat. I mean, they won't give it to you on a spoon, literally, but it'll be <laughs> it'll be a spoon's worth. You know what I mean? Uh, you got me reminiscing now. You got me reminiscing. Anyways, henceforth, henceforth. So. The lesson in this story right here, <clears throat> and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a, a straight, transparent on what I had to do because I want to send a message to all them people that in the pen that had these baller dreams, and I need them to ask themselves a question. So anyhow, I was started. I seen man, look, I seen how the cell phone trade started booming in prison. I'm talking about in like 2006, seven. That was when cell phones really started getting in because before then, man, we was having to use that phone on the wall and yeah. it was cleaning our clocks, cleaning our, our people's pockets. Yeah. I mean, pockets from that phone. So, how much man, was a phone I, I call? Said, I hate to stop you. How much was your phone calls? Back then, it was a straight bar little antique AT&T phone, man. That motherfucker was 500. No, no, not the cell phone, man. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. pay phone, the, the pay phone. Oh, 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 oh shit. That <laughs> motherfucker, man, how they was getting us is they was charging us to connect. Like, you'll pay like a $4 connection fee and then like $2 for every minute after. It was oh probably more than that. God. Because at the end of the day, it, it was damn near like $15 for a 15-minute phone call. So the, the connection fee was like, they was doing shit like this. Like, you'll get connected, get through to your folks, and all of a sudden, it'll mysteriously hang up. So that's $4 to the bank. That's yeah. $4 they got. Then you got to call back, like, what happened? 
well, that's another four dollars connection fee, and they was doing that shit, and so our so our folks was suing and shit, and that changed the progress. I mean, changed the process, and now the shit, the phones on the on the wall in prison is pretty much cheap as shit now. Yeah, but that's. But that's because there's so many cell phones now, and they yeah. can't stop that shit. They give out uh, free calls now to a lot of states. Uh, it's like uh, yeah. two free calls a, a month because I actually read about the phone laws. It, a lot of people have been putting a lot of yeah. pressure on that shit. So I was paying nine dollars a call at one point too. So that shit, I know exactly what you mean, man. Uh, so anyhow, man, we veered I, off, I, man. I, I come, I'm gonna come. I come with a scheme, right? <laughs> I'll come with a scheme. I'm, I ain't gonna cut. I ain't gonna say little brother. But I'm gonna say my little folks. I decided to have him bring me some marijuana in prison because I know he was wondering how we get it. Well, this is a past. This is my past. But I get the mar. I, have, I go on a visit and I get the marijuana. Right. This particular visit was so different because I went out later. Normally, I get out, get the bundle, stick it up my butt, and do it moving. Right. So. This particular vid, yeah, yeah, shock value, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it ain't shock value to me, man. I, you know, trust me. <laughs> it's funny though, because I'm wonder. I always wonder. I'm like, does every guy have a different technique for this shit? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they got to, yeah. man. Because you, you can't ask a guy like literally, hey, how do you exactly do this shit? You know, man, too well. The illest dude I ever seen had his girl stick it up her butt, up his butt. Like she get behind him, she get behind. That ain't him. a bad Boy, technique, I, I guess, huh? Man. <laughs> <laughs> Once, hey, hey, don't don't judge me, right? Don't don't judge me, right? But one time I seen it, and I knew because I because this this play kept echoing off the yard, like man, blood over there be having this girl do it. That's some freaky. That's some oh, ill shit. That, hey, that's some smart shit though, for real. Right. So I had to think about it. I'm like, well, his hands is visible to the camera, yeah, and all it looks is like she's hugging it from the back, exactly, and then boop. But why did I watch, man? Why one time they did the move and I was just watching his face. I'm like, what if it's too big? Like, what if it ain't? Like, yeah. what is, how do you do that? I watched his face. I was hey. like, I looked. He was like, I was, <laughs> hey. that was a joke to yours. You get to that point, you got to be committed, bro. There ain't no stopping yeah, now. Hey, got- look, that for real, that's how it goes, though. Look, when I used to go to VI, when I would catch my feels, you know, grab my, my, my old lady's ass and shit. We would go yeah. to the get take our picture. We getting up up against the wall, nice and tight. And I look, I got my arm around her back, you know, but really my hand on her, you know, grabbing some <laughs> cheeks, you know what I mean. So it's the yeah. same technique, you know what I mean. I can understand yeah. how yeah. it works. Worked like a yeah. charm for me, you know what I mean. So, uh, so the thing is, the thing is, if you want to visit with a dude, though, your options is limited, <laughs> and that's what my options was. And I should have listened to that little voice that says, "Don't do it." So when I went out there, I was off top late. That was rule number one. Number two is I didn't have no jacket on. You need a jacket to like conceal hand movements because you damn near a magician. And then you need cover. And I went against all three of them and went out and did some old bunk shit and grabbed it from under the table while my visitor was sitting across from me. And, and it just was in the open. Like anybody could have seen it. Yeah. And I did it. So when I grabbed it, it was like once I grabbed it, I started hearing like bells in my head. I don't know, like this is not good. Yeah. So I grabbed. It. So my move is when the when the business is over, everybody piles up into the podium, like they separate you from your visitors, and then you you kind of group up on the podium and wait for your ID, right? Yeah. So that's the move. So I yeah. get up and I shimmy, I shimmy up in the crowd. I go to the hoop. Woo! When I go to the hoop, right? It just was like, oh, I just, I like I said, I was still hearing, hearing them bells. As soon as I go to the hoop, about 10 seconds later, the police come behind me and grab me and say, don't move, you're under arrest. I, I'm in prison, but I, yeah. they tell me I'm under arrest again. You're yeah. under arrest for the introduction of contraband in the prison. I said, I don't know what the, you're talking about. What yeah. are you talking about? He was like, don't worry about it. And he took me. And walked me to the wall. He was like, "Yeah, we believe you got some concealed in your anal cavity." I was like, "Damn, oh, I don't know what you talking shit. about, man. I ain't got shit. I could shit for you right now." They was like, "Oh, you can shit for us right now, right now?" I was like, "Yeah." They was like, "Nah, cause we already know we got you. We got you." So they started walking me. They I remember this is in front of all the visitors, all the other inmates. So they're like, "Dirt done." <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. like Dirk's done. I would have said the same thing. Like, damn, he done. He gone. He gone. He's done. He gone, so fellas. Over. Say goodbye. <laughs> oh, man, split up. A, split, split up the CDs and tapes. Let's, he pour won't some, be back. let's pour something out on Dirt, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> man. So, so all I kept telling myself is my story doesn't end right here, like because I got two strikes. So and, and that would have been the third. So I, my story doesn't end right here. That's, That's all scary, I kept man. Telling That's scary. Like I don't know how I'm about. I don't know what I'm about to do, but I know I'm about to do a doozy. I don't even know. So they walk me to the to the uh, ad seg where Potty Watch is. I mean, you've had guests on on, on the past talk about or describe Potty Watch before. Dry cells. They have no water running and shit, so you got shit it out. Yeah. 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 Okay. So this was, a, I guess, a dry cell. No mattress, no nothing. Yeah. So the way they do us is they put a pair of boxers on frontwards, tape it. Boxers on backwards, tape it, taping a leg and the waist. Then they put a jumpsuit on you frontwards and a jumpsuit on backwards. And each one is taped. Each layer is taped. So if you take a shit, it's going to get trapped in that tape. And that's all, that's all she wrote. So, and then hold, they have. Hold on, man. I'm confused. What the hell are they doing to you? They're taping what now? Boxers. Taping. You're putting like on you're, the boxers normally. Right. They didn't strip you butt naked, right? So they put the boxers on first, right? Normal, normal way tape, boxers. Normal boxers. And they tape the leg. The bottom of the of the boxers, they tape it to your to your inner thigh. Oh, so, so your it, poop gets trapped in it. Yes. Oh so my do, god, dude! I ain't heard so of this go, technique ever in my life, man. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> so oh, look, this is. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. So, so remember, one pair of boxers frontwards taped at the waist and the bottom of the boxers. One pair of backwards taped frontwards and backwards. Yeah, to close off now, the hole. To close off the hole. To close off the hole so can't nothing come out. Now, now they put a jumpsuit on you, a onesie jumpsuit. They are taping the ankles of that. They tape the mid thigh of that. They tape your waist on that jumpsuit. And then they put, then they tape, uh, they tape here. So you're basically taped up on every level. But, and, and, on, oh, go ahead. What kind of tape? Duct tape? Duct tape. <laughs> Holy shit, man. <laughs> Duct tape. And you know what's crazy? You said they tape up your arm up here. You know why that's crazy? It's because they probably learned taping down here don't work. Dude probably chewed through the shit and re-swallowed it or something. Yes, you know yes, what I mean? Yes, yes. So they tape it up here where she can't get to the shit. You know what I mean? So yes. that's and crazy. Mind you, and mind you, I don't know nobody that's ever escaped from this. I mean, I is this common nobody. or is this some new technique they're doing on you? Uh, I had never been, I had been on potty watch prior times, but they was a lot like, they was nothing like this. Like they used to before, I, and I, and I made them change policy because of this, but before they used to just put cuffs on like your wrist and cuff you to your waist and just watch you because they have to have a police that's watching you. If you shit or anything like that, they, if they smell it, they're coming in there on you. When they, I mean, come in there on you. They're coming in there spraying you and asking questions later because you're trying to get rid of the contraband. So now I'm in there and remember, they they know they got me. Like they know they got me. They see me on camera do this shit. So they know they got me. They happy because they've been trying to get me for a while. So next to you know, I'm going to start walking laps in this in this cell, in this dry cell. I'm walking laps like how the fuck? I mean, I'm praying to everybody. But I'm... <laughs> But I'm walking last, and I'm noticing the first problem is that I got to pee. I got to pee, and obviously this shit is not going to come up out of me if if I got to pee, because I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of stuff at the same time. Yeah. So I lay on the bed. They got like a mattress with no cover or nothing. I lay on that thing, and I turn sideways and pee on myself. I'm sopping it up like old biscuit or something. Yeah. Once I got, <laughs> once I was, once I was able to pee, I was good. So I started walking laps. I'm talking about, I, I walked at least a thousand laps in this cell trying to figure out how I was going to get myself out this situation. Because if I get caught, my little bro is about to get done too. 
Yeah. If I get caught, I'm done. He's done. That's no. That's no bueno. Yeah. So what I'm realizing is, as I'm walking these laps, this tape that's on me, I'm starting to flex and expand this tape. So I notice the more I walk, the hotter this tape gets, the more it, it loosens up a little bit. So I walk these laps, and all of a sudden it hit me. Ding! If they got clothes on you, then that means they're straight to hold these clothes together. So I'm like, well, let me see. So I looked at the, the jumpsuit that I had on backwards was the ones that was on the outside. So I got to plucking at the thread, plucking at the thread next to, you know, I could fit my finger up in that thing. So I'm like, oh, if I can fit my finger in this hole, then I can fit my finger through the next set of jumpsuits because it was nothing but tied up string. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I'm like, oh, let me go a little further. I'm like, oh, I can feel the bottom of my niggities. So if I could feel the bottom of my niggities with my finger, then I could damn near get to to the uh to the bundle. So my my thinking is if I could feel down there, I should be able to get to it. And I'm not accepting no for an answer. So so nighttime came. They had another police watching me that was a loud mouth. He was one that just kept on talking. He kept on talking because there was somebody else on potty watch next to me. And it's one to one. Meaning one police, <laughs> one cell. Yeah. So this police watching me keep talking to the police over there, talking about old Folsom glory days and shit. Oh, <laughs> because he kept shit. to the CO probably like 30 years. Yeah, <laughs> or yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one of them. All the while, I'm over there on the bed putting this plan together. I'm expanding the holes a little bit. And the thing is, if they smell this shit, they're coming in there, right? So my thing is this what to do with the evidence now let me freeze and go back when i was in selena's valley i remember this dude this dude from dago had threw up the balloons or shit out the balloons no he threw them up and ate them again so to me that was the most disgusting thing i ever heard in my life so the dude like i said a dude that's that's watching me is an old older white guy he's supposed to be watching me and not talking to the to the other ceo that was watching the other guy because that's a distraction but oh well yeah. So I'm laying on I'm laying on the bed and I'm working on this hole because I didn't pop the thread. Mind you, I didn't pop the thread of the jumpsuit. And then the second jumpsuit that was taped, I, all I had to do was just go through the string because it's just like, you know, the string jumpsuits. Yeah, the string comes right out. So, right. So all I had to do was just go through that. They could tape that all they want, but it's frontwards. So then I went under the tape that was t- that, that was taped to my thighs because I had them. I didn't pee it on myself and. And then expanded them and did and to get it loose and moist with pee and all oh, that. Anyhow. Moist. <laughs> Moisty. You know how many people so, hate that word, moist? <laughs> moist. Oh, shit. Like right. chocolate cake. Uh, <laughs> yeah. all right. So I get to the I get under the tape, right? I could I could feel I could feel the sphincter. So if I can feel that, then that means that whatever comes out of it, I can grab it. So now the problem becomes the smell. Like if I try to do anything out of pocket, they smell that shit, they're coming in there. So I get the fire, so I push. The first thing came out, you know, I kind of had to hook it. Like you got to hook it with your finger and make sure like don't nothing touch like the clothes too much because then the clothes going to be smelling like shit. So this is like the perfect pitch, the perfect hit. It was perfect. I just had to kind of like scoop it a little bit. But the only problem is the first thing that came out was Dookie. So it wasn't the bundle. So I, so when I scooped it, uh, I went straight to my mouth. Oh, oh my God, man. Uh, I knew it was coming oh no. it still, uh, it still made it worse. Man, I ate that shit. It didn't taste like nothing to me. Like people kept saying, "You're you probably could, running through uh, adrenaline, bro." <laughs> so I had to repeat this process, and I knew it. My only thing is, what do you mean, breathe. repeat the process? I still, I ain't ate the bundle yet. The bundle's still up there. So what'd you eat? Shit, can't, shit, raw shit. <laughs> but what? But look at this. Hold what on, are man. my options? Hold on a second. <laughs> So you accidentally ate raw shit on accident, thinking it was the bundle? 
No, I ate it on purpose, knowing it wasn't the bundle. Oh, why? But where I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do with it? Oh, because you don't want them knowing that you took a dump. Yes, because if they smell shit, they're coming in there on me. Oh, oh damn! I have no choice. Bro, I'm about to so, edit some of this because I think it might make my viewers puke, man. I mean, shoot. Hey, I'm going to make it still look good. I should be good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, the sex, so I got to repeat this process, right? And the whole, the whole time I'm telling myself, man, I hope this ain't, I hope this ain't like that one. <laughs> so, I go for it. I wait for dude to start talking again. I go for it. Uh, when I get that one out, it's a bundle. It was a whole zip of weed, a whole ounce, man. So off top, it, I can't even allow it to get into the air, period. So once I get that out, bam, I stick the shit covered weed in my mouth and start chewing. So as I'm chewing, I'm chewing and I'm slicing plat like I'm, I'm I got a I got a whole assembly line going on in my mouth right now. This side is chewing, the, the middle of it is processing the pet the plastic and then getting it to where it's small enough for me to swallow. And then swallowing it. So, so I'm you running this. plastic and everything. Plastic and everything. No evidence. Bro, they would have. No evidence. I would have said, man, fuck, here's a fucking bud, bro. It's just some weed, dog. <laughs> take, take the weed, dog. I thought you were going to say, like, some dope or something like that. Some, something that gives some serious, crazy shit. But d- damn. You the guy. Man, ain't look, that crazy? That you, look, watch like thirty years from now, we legal in prison, and, and now you look back like, damn, I had to <laughs> eat this shit like that, man. <laughs> oh man, no hey, way, but I'm you, dude, I don't know how I'm you gonna did. I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna how. tell you this. You a soldier? I'm gonna tell for you real. this, man. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Hey. That's the craziest <laughs> shit I done heard on this channel, probably, man. You know. That's crazy. Man, but but think about it though. Your little bro is gonna get done. He's washed for introduction. And then I'm done for introduction. And it's like I knew what I I knew the game I was getting into. I didn't know what I was willing to do until I was faced with it. And in that aspect, that was my only option because I knew the process. Like I was familiar, I was very familiar with the process on how they get out. Yeah. And I knew that accepting failure was not an option. Yeah. So I looked, I took that and 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 got rid of all excuses. So when I was done, I was like, man, you yes! yeah, <laughs> you beat them all. Hey. <laughs> I was. They're gonna so... find. They ain't gonna find nothing but some pieces of plastic, maybe. You Nothing. Know? Yeah. So, so do they? They got goon squads. They got goon squads yeah. out there. Yeah, they got goon called? squads, ninja team, turtle shells. What you all kinds of names for them? But yeah, goon squads. What we called them. Yeah, basically them the ones that's coming and bringing all the business because them the ones that they like the police of the police. Man, them dudes came. They came the next morning. They was like they came in high five into the uh, police that was watching me there because another shift had left. Oh yeah, excuse me. All right, all right, all right, let me come back. After the yes, after a yes, I won the game. I t- I promptly told the police, I gotta take a shit. <laughs> I gotta take a shit. Yeah. Hell yeah, I gotta take a shit now. So, the the rule of potty watch in California is three shits or three days. That's what they're saying. Three shits or three days. Whatever comes first. That's a lie. That's smoke screen. They will hold you in that mouth till they think you' about to die yeah. until you give up what they want. So for me to be wanting the shit in the first morning, that's like amazing to them because yeah. the person normally that got something, they gonna ride it out. I've seen people hold their shit for like 10, 15 days until like they gotta go to the outside hospital to pull that shit up out of them. <laughs> so, so. After after I didn't ate this shit, I'm like yes. And then yeah. they, but the dude, the thing is, when you got a shit, they gotta call the watch commander and the sergeant, and they come down because remember, they gotta cut all this tape up off of you. Do they record this shit? This no, they got uh, a camera. Uh, okay. No, but now they might because it is. <laughs> oh shit! This gets crazier. Yes, they bring the sergeant in, right? The sergeant comes and they cut all this stuff off of me, but they kept on taking their time. I'm, I kept on telling purposely, man, I got to go, man, I got to go, I got to go. So then when the sergeant comes in, 
they cut this stuff off and they're like, Jesus, Lord, he, he went on himself. So now that justifies shit tracks being on my on my clothes. So they're like, we need to get him some new clothes and stuff. Next time, try to give us an, a warning when you got to use the bathroom. I'm like, cool. So they give me some new clothes and hide the evidence. Didn't even notice that you the- ripped open a hole. Man, uh, uh-uh. uh, they they not trying to deal with nothing. Got boo boo in it, yeah, yeah. And they don't know yeah, how yeah, much yeah. boo boo, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like they picking it up like this <laughs> and putting it in bags and put it in the corner. So now this is the first morning the goon squad come up in that thing. He opened the gate. He like, they, I mean, he come in high fiving with the police that was watching. And they, he was like, "Where is it at?" It was like, "Where's what?" It was like, "Where is it at?" The the, the, the uh, contraband he had in him. It was like he shit last night and it was clean. He was like, "What?" It was clean. Went in my cell, told me to step outside. I'm step. Remember, I'm cuffed up and still. I, I left that one part. When they got you in this jumpsuit, you're also cuffed up to the waist. You're also oh, cuffed shit. up. Like, belly chain. Yeah, that's you're tough, cuffed up. bro. Right. So, and your ankles are cuffed up. You got a waist. You got a, a shackle around your ankle too. I forgot about that part. So when I cut, when I step out the cell and they come in. All I see is the little one mattress in the cell flying. They're like, what the? F-? No, they're going crazy up in the cell. What's the cell? In. Your cell? Yeah, the potty watch cell or the dry cell, as you call it. Okay. They're the, the dry cell because there's nothing in there but the mattress. Oh, and so they come in your cell mat- throwing up your mat. Yeah, because okay. I don't have it because I shit for them and I didn't produce nothing. Are those and guys that they pulled you out the VI? Yeah, that's the goon squad. Oh, okay, okay. So okay. They're coming back in the morning. They're coming back in the morning to come collect the evidence. Yeah. But there is none. Yeah. And I shit. Yeah. So yeah. the first shit is supposed to produce the bundle. Yeah. And it didn't. So they got to put throwing mattresses around and shit, trying to th- ask me where it is, cussing me out. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about, sir. I don't know. Yeah. I, in my mind, I didn't want the game. Now I just got to wait for this <laughs> shit to pass out me. So, uh, so. <laughs> Hey, you so feel high now, at all? Did you feel high at all eating that whole album? Oh, I was so high. Man, shut <laughs> up. Are you serious, bro? I, I was so high, but it was that's why I was laughing. Everything was funny. Everything was funny. But by the time the sun came up, I was like, man, I will shit for you. I will piss for y'all. I will do whatever you want. I don't have nothing, and my anal cavity proves it. I ain't yeah. got nothing. So I'm sitting and they playing games with me like this. Like I give them a shit that will be like, cause remember three shits or three days. I give them a shit that be like, yeah, that's not enough. Do it again. I'm like, damn, I'm eating everything. I want lunches, extra lunches, everything. Cause they think they slick, but they give you all the coffee and lunches and shit you want. Oh, but they I give ate you good it all. Coffee? They give you good coffee? Hell no, nah, that's that state's best. That's oh, that's, that's man, that shit ain't Folsom, got no caffeine, it's really. Called, it's called Folsom Folgers. That's what it is. <laughs> is it weak on the caffeine? Hell no, nah, that's just strong as shit. <laughs> oh, damn. See, our state coffee like water, man, so. Oh, nah, hell no. Nah. Oh, okay. It depends damn. on who makes it. It depends on who makes it, but that Folsom Folgers is that Folsom Folgers is, 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 is motor oil. That shit's hitting, huh? Damn, you make me want to stop right now. Guaranteed. Guaranteed to make you shit. Make me try. Guaranteed. Make me make me want to go visit Folsom right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. shit! Hey, all right, all right, all right. So, all right, all right. All right. Uh, I don't even know where we're at. All right. Yeah. So by the second day, I'm wait. I'm wondering. The only thing in the back of my mind is I'm wondering what this shit is gonna look like when it comes out. And remember, I'm drinking coffee, everything. So it passed on the shift where the dude was like. He was like, dude, please do not shit on my watch. I got eight hours. Just let me do my eight and leave. Shit on the next officer. Don't yeah. shit on my watch. Yeah. It was one of them. So I was so I was like, look, dude, I gotta do what I gotta do. I gotta get out of here too. I obviously ain't broke no rolls. So I gotta do what I gotta do. And I felt it too, because it was a monster. It was a monster. It's an ounce, man. man. That shit at least an ounce. <laughs> man. That was a monster. <laughs> hey, when it came out, and they put it in a plastic bag, and they take like a spoon, like a like one of them popsicle sticks, and then they like fillet it. They like fillet the shit to see if there is like something inside of yeah. it. And after it's not, after there's it's flat, then they flushing it. And everything's go. So he filleted. And he was like, 
yeah, man, it's real grainy. Like, like your your poop's real grainy. I'm like, yeah, man, I've been eating hella sandwiches and hella bread and shit. That's why. <laughs> that shit sticks and stems. <laughs> 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 oh shit okay that's crazy man this is an unbelievably crazy story <laughs> about this shit okay so so when it was all said and done right once that once because they deep they they flushed you after they they called a watch commander they're like yeah he was clean uh they're like okay get rid of it they take they take the the eyes of their fellow co officer that it was clean so when it was all said and done, man, after they got rid of that grainy shit, that was the end of the evidence, and I was just chilling. But the problem is they they were so mad at me that instead of three shits in three days, they made me shit for them ten times. Like, I shit for them ten times. Like, I, I went on Potty Watch on Saturday. I was supposed to get off of Potty Watch around Monday or Tuesday. Damn. Man, when I came out of Potty Watch, people was looking at dirt like, what? Where are you like, been, how? bro? Hey, look, they had man, you in the, like, that was like the shoe. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, <laughs> what the? How did you do that? How did you do that? Longest so, serving I, Potty Watch inmate known to man. <laughs> man, when I, when, I, <laughs> when, I came, when I came back to the yard, the homies wanted to know. Like, nobody had ever beat Potty Watch like that. Like, I remember I went on Potty Watch one time because I had I, uh, they, they patted my sock and I had some, some contraband in it. I tried to swallow the shit. It got stuck right there. So I took off running and passed it off to one of my coworkers, and they got rid of the evidence. But they still put me on Potty Watch. And that shit was nothing but a mattress on the floor and belly chains. And, and, and then on top of that, I flushed the toilet and the toilet worked. So that shit was hella, that, that potty wash was hella weak. And yeah. then I went on potty wash in Solano because I ate some stuff and that potty wash was hella weak, but I only ate a little bit and my sister ate that. So this was a whole different ball game. Yeah. So what happened is as a result of me beating that potty wash, now they put mitts on your hands. Like, like uh, it look, it's literally like you sticking your hand in a, in a, in a mitt. And then at the at the bottom of the mitt, they tighten that. So your hands are no more they, you can't use your hands no more. That's done. Oh, that's derm wait. Oh now they have it like that? Yes. Now Damn. you can't use it. Your hands are inside of a, like a, a, a metal, like a, I mean not metal, but like a hard cardboard yeah. thing where you can't get to them no more. Holy shit, that's a pit to that. Can you imagine coming into work seeing a guy like that? Open this up. First thing you're drinking, coffee, wake up, get have a, have a nice day, uh, lovely wife of mine, children, my beautiful six children. <laughs> you go to work and you see a mother like, ah, ah. Uh, that shit's hey. crazy, man. You know what I mean? I can't even picture someone you, wearing I'm a mint. I'm going to tell you something. On a side note, I'm going to tell you something, man. <laughs> I ended up, after I beat that, I ended up getting a job in Old Folsom at the West Gate. And the West Gate is where all the police that are going on to the yard, they come through. They either mm -hmm. go to the program or the West Gate. And then the West Gate is like a taxi to the front gate. So I seen all the police. So just imagine, I'm seeing this goon squad very frequently. I ain't going to say his name, but his name started with a C. But I, I, I see him very frequently. And his, his story is... Dirt, he called me by my nickname too. He called me by my nickname. Yeah. He was like, Dirt, you mother. And he told us co workers, he was like, Hey, Dirt right here is the only one ever beat me. God damn it. But it's all right, man. He was like, You did what you had to do, and I did what I had to do. No hard feelings, man. Yeah. So guess what? When I caught the gun charge, they sent me back to Old Folsom. <laughs> yeah. That's they sent crazy, me back. Man. And I was able to see I was able to see him again, and it was still mutual respect. Like he could have gave me a hard time when I went back, but he didn't even he it was like you know like this is 2018, and that happened in 2006. Yeah. So, so the mutual respect was always there, man. But that was a clash. That well, was a clash. Well, I know I ain't know. never heard no shit like that. Literally, you know, <laughs> uh, that's crazy, man. Uh, Nasty, but crazy, and it's believable too. Though it's believable, you know, uh, I can completely see someone doing that, and, and I feel sorry for the guys that got to wear mittens now. They have no chance in hell. Man. <laughs> They're I use dumb. That one. 
They're, they're, I oh, I'm, I'm sure someone someone will find a way. You know, someone always does. But uh, yeah, tell me and the people about uh, what you got going on, man. Because I would love to bring you on for multiple episodes. You got plenty of stories, and you t- if you tell stories like this on your channel, I'm sure you're gonna have a lot of people come your way. So tell people where they can find yeah. you, man. Man, you can find me at Dirty Weather Nine One Six on YouTube, Dirty Weather on Instagram. Uh, Kurt Him on Facebook and Dirty Weather fan page on Facebook, Reverb Nation Dirty Weather, SoundCloud Dirty Reverb Weather. Nation, what's that? That's a music app. Okay. I, used do, I used to do music too. I okay. still do music lightweight. Okay. But that okay. really, that was just like, that was like a past thing because I figured like it's hard for musicians. So I figure I'll create a platform big enough to where I can release my own music whenever I so choose instead of putting myself at the mercy of these producers and stuff. And this is coming from someone, ladies and gentlemen, that has done what? 17 Blickums. You know what I mean? Blickums. You, hey, you can't you can't you can't say shit about you not being able to learn technology or anything along those lines. Get off your ass, open up your eyes and mind, get in there. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're doing all this shit. You just more what I do. You know what I mean? You done triple amount of time I did, so that's crazy, man. You know, I'm gonna salute tell you, to you, I'm man. I'm going to tell you some real stuff while we can get into it. I'm going to put it in a nutshell, and we'll talk about the shows a different time. But when I came back out, like when I went back in, I knew something was wrong. Like I, my thinking wasn't right. I shouldn't have fell for that one. So when I came home, I took that time as a re as a time as a chance to, to work on my mind. So I came with a plan. And that plan was I'm gonna be famous or I'm gonna be known within one year. And sure enough, I was did uh sure enough I was on I went on divorce court first. Yeah. And then Steve then Big Herc, then Steve Wilkos. And a lot of these a lot of people go on these shows. But they don't have a platform after that. They don't have nowhere for their fans to go, yeah. the people that are interested in them. They don't have no place for them to go. They was just on TV one time, gone. Just on TV, then gone. My yeah. thing is, I'm going on TV, and I'm going to give everybody a platform to come to to continue the story. It's like watching half a movie. Yeah. So now the movie, the movie has been continuing. That's cool, man. You know, that's what's up. And... I haven't seen your episode on uh, either of those. I'm thinking, I don't know if I'm I'm debating whether or not I should watch them before you tell me about them or not. Uh, <laughs> let me, I will let, say this. Let me ask you one. Let me this. ask you one thing, man, about both of those. I don't, I got many questions. We will talk about them next episode. But one question: How was Steve Wilkos, man? Is he really a, an asshole in real life, man? Man, Steve, an asshole. He looked like an asshole, man. <laughs> And they still, hey, and they still show that show? Yeah, yeah, hell yeah, it's on there. Uh, Williams versus uh, um um, it's called uh. No, I'm do saying, you want a wife or- did, I'm saying, do they still make uh new uh new shows? Like, is it like? Yeah. Okay. Hell yeah. That's crazy, man. I'm glad to see you out doing your thing, man. And, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, he mentioned all the stuff that he has uh going on right now. I'm gonna make sure that everything's linked and pinned in the comment section description of the video if you want to go. Uh, follow him and listen to his wild stories over there on his channel. Uh, is there anything else that you do over there? Do you do any interviews or anything like that? No. I, oh, I definitely, <laughs> I definitely do interviews. I interviewed. Uh, you ever heard a rapper named Pooh Man? Pooh Man? Band? Yeah. Nah, I don't, I don't keep track of too much of the uh, rap game as recently. You know. Oh no, nah, um, he old school. He no, nah, he old school. He had a oh, song okay. called "Fucking with Dank" back in the days. But okay. I interview a lot of positive people, positive people in the community. People that got out the pen that got a, a positive story to tell. So it's a lot of it's a lot of positivity going positivity going on. I got the weather cast, and the weather what the weather cast is is I bring some subs on, and then I bring uh people that I that I you know that I can vouch for in my life. I bring them on, and I allow them to conversate with people from the other side because most of my friends have done like fifteen and twenty years yeah. or had life sentences and came home. And people are interested in what they, you know, what they mind frame is like. So I provide that bridge with the weather cast for all walks to life. That's what's up, man. I appreciate you coming on to the show. Uh, let, me give, keep... let me give my let me give my shout outs one hey, time. Go ahead, roll with them, roll with them. First off, let me get a shout out to all my subs, the whole dirty nation. 
shout out to the wrench mob. That's what we call my subscribers. They, I mean, my uh, my uh, moderators. That's the wrench mob. Wrench mob. Okay. Okay. The wrench mob. I want to give a shout out to y'all, past and current, because without y'all, my channel will be two times harder. I want to give a shout out to Nate Dog nine one six the homie i want to give a shout out to Drina's haven nine one six that's my girl that's her youtube channel i want to give a shout out to crazy nick stories up and coming doing his thing and first and most of all shout out to big hurt for providing the foundation hell yeah big hurt man he's one of the godfathers to this thing man you know you better believe it <laughs>